The murder that started WW1. The start of World War I was instigated when a Serbian revolutionary, during the couple's visit to Sarajevo, assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the presumptive heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, along with his wife Sophie. Despite facing opposition from his uncle, Emperor Franz Joseph, Archduke Ferdinand decided to marry Sophie Chotek in 1900, driven by their deep affection for each other. Sophie hailed from a family of lesser-known Czech nobles, not belonging to any reigning or formerly reigning European dynasty. Consequently, their children were declared ineligible for the throne, and Sophie faced numerous petty humiliations at imperial banquets, such as entering each room last and sitting far away from her husband without an escort at the dinner table. Ferdinand held the positions of both Franz Joseph's heir and Inspector General of the army. In his capacity as Inspector General, he accepted an invitation to attend military exercises in Bosnia-Herzegovina in June 1914. These provinces had been annexed by Austria-Hungary a few years earlier, against the wishes of neighboring Serbia, which also desired them. Despite Ferdinand's negative view of the Serbs, whom he regarded as pigs, thieves, murderers, and scoundrels, he had opposed the annexation because he feared it would worsen an already volatile political situation. Upon learning about Ferdinand's upcoming visit, a secret revolutionary society called the Young Bosnians, consisting of peasant students, began planning his assassination. Gavrilo Princip, Trifko Grabas, and Nedelko Kabrinovic, members of this group, traveled to Belgrade, the Serbian capital, in May, where they obtained weapons and cyanide capsules from the Black Hand, a terrorist organization with close ties to the Serbian army. After practicing with their weapons in a Belgrade park, they returned to Bosnia-Herzegovina, with assistance from Black Hand associates who helped them smuggle their weapons across the border. The involvement of the Serbian government in the plot remains unclear to this day. On June 23, Ferdinand and Sophie left their estate and traveled to Bosnia-Herzegovina. Despite receiving several warnings to cancel the trip due to potential dangers, the Archduke was aware of the risks that awaited them. When the axles of their car overheated, Ferdinand reportedly remarked, our journey starts with an extremely promising omen. Here our car burns, and down there they will throw bombs at us. Upon arriving at a spa town near Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina, Ferdinand participated in two days of military exercises while Sophie visited schools and orphanages. One evening, on a whim, they decided to explore Sarajevo's bazaars, attracting a crowd of onlookers, including Gavrilo Princip. However, they were treated with warmth and politeness during their outing. After attending a banquet with religious and political leaders, only one day of events remained before their planned return home. He and Sophie boarded a train for the short journey into Sarajevo. On this occasion, Sophie was allowed to walk alongside Ferdinand during a brief troop inspection. Later, they got into an open-topped car for a motorcade ride to City Hall. However, the car in front of them, meant to carry six specially trained officers, had only one officer and three local policemen. Surprisingly, throughout the trip, Austro-Hungarian officials seemed more focused on dinner menus than security details. Meanwhile, seven young Bosnians positioned themselves along the Apple Key, a main avenue in Sarajevo parallel to the Miljaka River. When the motorcade passed by, as its route had been publicly announced beforehand, Kabrinovic inquired about the car carrying the Archduke and then hurled his bomb at it. However, the bomb bounced off the folded-up roof and ended up under a different vehicle. The resulting explosion wounded two army officers and several bystanders, but Ferdinand and Sophie escaped with minor injuries. Kabrinovic attempted to take his own life by jumping into the mostly dry riverbed but was captured by the police. He purportedly shouted, I am a Serbian hero, as he was led away. At least two other young Bosnians had an opportunity to target the Archduke but apparently lost the courage to carry out the assassination. Instead of leaving Sarajevo immediately, Ferdinand decided to proceed with the planned event at City Hall. Afterward, he insisted on visiting the wounded officers in the hospital. To discourage further bomb attacks, the motorcade sped along the Apple Key. However, by mistake, the first three cars turned onto a side street where Princip happened to be standing. As the cars attempted to reverse back onto the Apple Key, Princip seized the moment and fired two shots at point-blank range, hitting the Archduke in the neck and Sophie in the abdomen. Ferdinand murmured, Sophie, Sophie, don't die, stay alive for our children, but both succumbed to their injuries within minutes. Princip, a slender 19-year-old Serbian army reject, 
later confessed to killing Ferdinand but claimed he hadn't meant to harm Sophie. Due to being three weeks shy of the death penalty age, Princip received a 20-year sentence but died in jail from tuberculosis in April 1918, at just 23 years old. The assassination ignited a rapid descent into World War I amid existing tensions among Europe's powers. Austria-Hungary secured German support for punitive action against Serbia and issued an ultimatum to Serbia, designed to be difficult to accept. Serbia proposed arbitration, but Austria-Hungary chose to declare war on July 28, 1914 exactly a month after Ferdinand's death. The conflict quickly involved Germany, Russia, France, Belgium, Montenegro, and Great Britain, with other nations like the United States joining later. The war lasted until 1918 and claimed the lives of over 16 million people, including soldiers and civilians. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it please check put some of my other videos. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.